After Wilder completed revisions for Little House in the Big Woods, she began work on yet another children's manuscript, which we'll discuss in an upcoming lecture. But at about the same time, in the fall of 1931, Lane began working on a manuscript of her own, a novel with the working title, Courage. Lane had come to realize that there was a market for her mother's frontier material, not as autobiography, but as fiction. She pitched sections of Pioneer Girl to her mother's editor, Marion Fury at Knopf, and described the story, which simply needed to be fictionalized, as being full of fascinating material about pioneer life in the Dakotas, the building of the railroads, homesteading, the coming of the grasshoppers, sod shanties, and the memorable hard winter of 1870. Fury, of course, wrote back a month later with news that she was about to be laid off. But by then, Lane had apparently come to believe what her mother's frontier material really needed was a writer with the vision and experience to appeal to adult readers, a writer who could transform it into a strong, mythic novel that would speak to the hardships of the Depression. Although Lane had written several novels in the 1920s, by the end of the decade she had lost her confidence in the genre. She wrote fellow writer Clarence Day, There is no reason why I shouldn't settle down to short stories, except that my mind naturally runs to longer things. I don't know why, for heaven knows that everything there is to know about a novel coincides precisely with what I don't know about it. It isn't only a question of technique. I don't know the feel of a novel. I don't know what a novel is when I need it. But the material in Pioneer Girl gave Lane new confidence in the genre. The title of her new novel, Courage, perhaps reflected both the theme of the manuscript and Lane's renewed confidence in her ability to again tackle a challenging literary genre. Lane began to piece together episodes inspired by Pioneer Girl into what she hoped would be a mythic frontier novel about a young married couple striking out on their own. Her main characters' names would be Charles and Caroline. Sound familiar? Meanwhile, in March 1932, Laura Ingalls Wilder finished the first draft of her manuscript, Farmer Boy, and Lane edited it in May and June, typed it in August, and sent it off to Harper and Brothers. While she edited Farmer Boy, Lane also revised and polished her own novel. She changed the manuscript's title from Courage to Let the Hurricane Roar, a hymn from her mother's childhood, and then submitted it to an agent. But Lane apparently told her mother nothing about the manuscript's origins, subject matter, or themes. Let the hurricane roar was Lane's secret. In September, Harper and Brothers rejected Farmer Boy. But at roughly the same time, the Saturday Evening Post accepted Let the Hurricane Roar. For the first time, Wilder was deeply distressed by her daughter's success. Lane had mined Pioneer Girl without Wilder's knowledge and had sold the resulting manuscript to one of the very magazines Wilder had hoped would accept Pioneer Girl. Wilder felt betrayed. The similarities between Pioneer Girl, Little House in the Big Woods, and Let the Hurricane Roar were undeniably striking. Very briefly, here's what I mean. All three manuscripts featured leading characters named Charles and Caroline. Charles, in Let the Hurricane Roar, was laughing and bold, a daring hunter, a dancer, fiddler, and fighter. He was clearly modeled on Wilder's father, as he appears in both Pioneer Girl and Little House in the Big Woods. As for Caroline, she was a quiet person who never lost the wonder that she had won such a man as Charles. 
Lanes, Charles, and Caroline also move west, leaving behind their home in the big woods of Wisconsin. In addition, Lane's description of the homestead Charles chooses for the couple sounds very much like Wilder's description of the one her family secured on the banks of Plum Creek. Charles and Caroline's nearest neighbors there parallel the Nelsons in Pioneer Girl. A shimmering cloud of grasshoppers descends on the couple's homestead and wipes out their wheat crop. During an unusually hard winter, Charles and Caroline twist hay for fuel and discover a herd of cattle lost in a blizzard standing motionless outside the dugout door. Their own breath streaming upward while they plodded before the storm had frozen and blinded them. This scene comes directly out of Pioneer Girl. As I point out in Laura Ingalls Wilder, A Writer's Life, Lane pulled out the most dramatic, colorful elements in her mother's autobiography and distilled them into a kind of fictional pioneer elixir to fortify her readers against Depression-era hopelessness. There are, of course, important differences between Lane's fiction and her mother's autobiography and even Little House in the Big Woods. Lane's work is more abstract and more overtly political than her mother's writing. Caroline in Let the Hurricane Roar, for example, emerges at the end of the novel as a strong, even fiercely independent heroine capable of providing for and protecting her infant son in Charles' absence. And Lane openly addressed her ideological purposes in Let the Hurricane Roar. The novel was a reply to pessimists, written from my feeling that living is never easy, that all human history is a record of achievement and disaster. Let the Hurricane Roar was an instant success, and less than a year after its publication in the Saturday Evening Post, it was published in book form in 1933. Wilder was dismayed by the book's success. Why? Was Wilder jealous? Was she being petty and possessive? Let's think about this for a minute. Lane had raided Wilder's Pioneer Girl, lifted its most memorable and dramatic sequences, and used them without Wilder's knowledge to create a bestseller. By most standards, what Lane had done amounted to plagiarism. Furthermore, Lane herself was already a well-known, established author. The success of Let the Hurricane Roar in such a prestigious publication as the Saturday Evening Post, and then as a standalone book, could destroy the future of Little House in the Big Woods, a children's book from an unknown author. And to make matters worse from Wilder's perspective, her publisher had rejected her second novel. It may have seemed to Wilder that Let the Hurricane Roar had destroyed her literary future. If Wilder had accepted her daughter's actions and success without any qualms, she would not have been an ambitious or discerning writer. Lane, in whom Wilder had entrusted her literary career, had dealt her a major and unexpected blow. As for Lane herself, her reaction to her mother's displeasure was remarkably insensitive. In her diary, Lane noted that she hid an advertisement for Let the Hurricane Roar from her mother out of a sense of, quote, self-preservation. And when Wilder saw and read it with an air of distaste, Lane wrote that her mother had destroyed the simple perfection of my pleasure. I should also point out that during this period, Lane continued to lift material from Pioneer Girl and use it as the foundation for other fictional pieces, including two short stories that eventually became part of Lane's novel, Old Hometown. Furthermore, she contacted her agent, trying to sell him on the idea for yet another project that would focus entirely on her interpretation of the hard winter. It is possible, however, that on some deeper level, 
Lane realized the wound she had inflicted on her mother. In the winter and spring of 1933, she suffered from deep depression and wrote this in her diary. Why am I such a monster? I am a monster. I always have been. There is no true warmth in my nature. I have no heart. Ultimately, Wilder herself accepted this awkward situation with her daughter gracefully and professionally. She turned her attention away from Let the Hurricane Roar and tore back into her rejected manuscript, Farmer Boy, working on editing and revising it, hoping that Harper and Brothers would finally accept it. More about this in our next lecture. I should also point out, however, that Let the Hurricane Roar is still in publication now, but its title has changed to Young Pioneers. So have the names of its two main characters.